I'm a sixth generation Texan, and I grew up in the heart of God's country. I grew up in the middle of the Texas Panhandle in a small town 60 miles from Amarillo called White Deer that when everyone was home had a thousand people. Both my parents were staunch, anti-racist, anti-capital punishment, unusually liberal parents to live in a town with mostly very conservative people. And that kind of conditions how I believe. I grew up in a family with four children, and I have a sister who was adopted when she was five, and I was seven. Her mama was Kiowa Apache, American Indian. Her daddy was Comanche, and she came to live with us when I was first grade. And so I've been hanging around with Indian people pretty much all my life. And I went to my sister's hometown, you know, when I was in grade school and high school, we'd periodically go to Oklahoma, where she came from. And when I came to school, my brother and I and my sister came to school as first grade. She was the only dark complected person in the school. And nobody had seen an Indian and she was teased a lot. And so we would have to gradually educate our fellow classmates that that was prejudicial behavior. Either I would remind them or my brother would remind them. And if the person was really big, it might take two of us to catch him on the way home and impress upon him that that was unethical behavior. That's anthropology's challenge to me, is, is to address the issue of inequality and how that's perpetuated. And it's not just at the university level. And I challenge students all the time, you go fix this. I couldn't, my parents couldn't, my grandparents couldn't. What are you gonna do about it? With teaching here and teaching, you know, the vast majority of the students are Texans. And I ask them every time, how many of you are Texans? And whatever we're teaching about, race, inequality, anything, you know, it just gives you a huge amount of space to, to educate students. And students tell me they appreciate the, I bring in family, because I know they all have mothers and daddies too. I probably taught, I don't know how many, thousands of students. You can count the people you can change probably on one hand in a, in a year or two years, so you don't affect very many people. But there's some reward. It's a bully pulpit, and I take every advantage of it. I'm instilled with looking for arrowheads and looking for the past because we're farmers, you know, and, and you're always looking at the ground and you're trying to learn from the earth. Sharing is one of the hardest things humans do. In spite of the golden rule, in spite of everything on earth that all the religions tell us we're supposed to share. And we behave like all the other animals, only we consider ourselves to be above them. When, when I 
defended my thesis. I said this in 1976 when, when I defended my thesis, and, and, they, and they said, well, because I was talking about culture and other animals having culture, and, and they said, well, geez, Austin, you're going to reduce us to being like the coyotes. And I said, yes. I think we're, our DNA is similar enough that we can say we've got a lot more common ground with the coyotes than we do with the ants. And when I defended my dissertation, I, it was all about land use intensification and, and, you know, the origin of agriculture, but really it was about intensively exploiting root foods. And there are whole models that, that talk about the development of agriculture and has really nothing to do with our sentientness, that, that, that happens by itself, and, and that's because of symbiotic relationships. And, and they, again, my major professors told me that, well, Austin, you know, how can you say that about agriculture just developed like that by itself without human consciousness? And I said, well, have you read about carrier ants? that go out and cut leaves and take those leaves underground and underground they're growing a bacteria, a fungus underground that doesn't grow anywhere else. It's unique to them. And, and they said, well, yeah, but that's natural. And I said, well, now, do you think those ants were created doing that? Or do you think that occurred through evolution? Anyway, I didn't want to push that too much because they all had to sign off on my, on my defense. But and they, they didn't get that. That didn't bother them because they just they were used to me by then. But the idea that that we're unique, it's hard for me to believe. And when I look up at the stars at night, I'm always reminded of my dad saying, "Who else is up there?" <laughs>